discussed extensively uh, on our broadcast team because of his kit and how powerful it is. It is available. And finally, Braum and Kled. So I'm quite surprised by XL's bands. So I think it's because Ro uh, Finn is a Kled one trick and they clearly have something in mind to pick top lane, which, fun fact, probably Urgot. Uh, and Finn would probably go to his next best champion, which would then be the Kled that they don't want to have yeah. to deal with. So I think they're just taking him away from some of his comfort picks. I really like the fact that Expect is now on the Urgot. I think that he's one of the most reliable players on this team. And by giving him one of the strongest champions in the current meta, going up against Finn, who uh, sometimes even struggled when playing the Urgot last week, means that you're kind of guaranteeing a strong top side of the map. And if they lock in the sun, it's going to be really easy for Expect to generate a lot of pressure towards the top side, but the cost is that Hiku has Lucian, which is a strong laning champion. Well, super important to note, Expect has played Urgot once before he went unkilled, 5-0-4, and four. and now he's going to be in this favorable matchup, and Hiku plus Vanda, can they turn some pressure out onto Jeskla and Kasing? Lucian into Draven, and Kasing's already thrown the Thresh down. Ooh, so I really like this as well because uh, one of the big answers to Lucian's lane dominance is picking Draven just because he's stronger in terms of early skirmishing and his ability to uh, his ability to trade. You pair that up with a Thresh and you're already guaranteed a very strong two versus two lane. So uh, I think that for Kasing it means that he can be that playmaker, he can roam around the map and uh, look for opportunities to make stuff happen. The concern I have is that you're putting Jeskla on the Draven and his laning phase has been one of his weakest points and the fact that you're now giving him what should be on paper a winning matchup uh, and putting more emphasis on him to play what is a very challenging champion, especially at high prey, means that XL must have a lot of confidence in him. If there were any AD carry to let Jester go toe to toe with and feel confident about it, maybe HeQ would be one of those guys. Somebody with equally questionable laning phases and definitely not somebody that has been a shining light as far as the bot laners are concerned this spring. But the pressure is on. It's up to XL and Jeskla to turn this around. They know it's going to be into that Lucian Alistair and phase two bans. Syndra is taken off the pool. Uh, Lissandra LeBlanc. So the mid pool or the mid champion pool is being hit pretty heavily right now. And still no indication in junglers. And we know Kikis, do you know Kikis might just run anything. Uh, so what's interesting about these bans is. Uh, remember that while Finn is a rookie, Special's also a rookie. And last week, these are the two champions that he chose to play. And people can say what they want about Sengux, but he's often been like a, he's been a middle of the pack mid laner for a very long time. Yep. And people sometimes undervalue that, but he still sits at like the five, six, maybe sometimes even four mark when it comes to like bet top mids in Europe. And going up against Special, the experience difference is huge. So you would imagine that Senkex has a very deep champion pool that he can look to leverage. And by narrowing that pool from Special, it makes his life that much harder to actually play around. And I remember Special talking in an interview last week about going up against Nukeduck and being excited about it and talking about that matchup. This time around, Special is going to go with the Golden Oldie. Oriana in the mid lane. We've seen it popping up a few more times. On the LCK uh, this morning. As well, and last week as well. So we've seen more Oriana. It's a champion that never really goes away. Into Zoe as well. I absolutely love Oriana in the early laning phase. That passive is so frustrating to deal with with the added magic damage. And might we just get another Yorick Mori? Wait, what? Where is... Locked in Wait, again. But where is it? Jungle Yorick? Or jungle Urgot. Wait, what? <laughs> Which uh, one? I have never seen a jungle Yorick or Urgot before. This is brand new for me, Quickshot. Uh, wow, that is very, very surprising. Neither of them would have strong early pathing, so I love the Olaf lock in for Kikis. You can already see that in his mind, he's like, I'm invading, guys, I'm invading. Yep. I know that I can get in the faces of both these champions very early on. Let's see what XL choose to do with this draft for themselves. Um, because remember, they do have until the final few seconds, last 20 seconds, to actually lock in the positions of each of these champions. What I can say for certain is that the Orianna will be played in the mid lane. The question is, where will the Urgot and the uh, Yorick go? Well, I think if we step back from that, we'll, we'll get to that comp in a second. Um, You've got two seconds left, Trevor. Okay, we'll get to it right now, since you're making me wait. There it is, Urgot, Urgot jungle. jungle and Yorick <laughs> Urgot top. Jungle. Um, what do you make of XL's team composition? Well, I can see pretty strong lanes in every lane. Um. <laughs> uh, you know, like, what do you think? Oh. 
This, uh, this is a tough one, quick shot. <laughs> because Yorick's not going to get bullied by Scion, but Scion's ghouls, uh, the ghouls of Yorick so, are going to help Scion's passive. And I, mean, so, I mean, ultimately, the thing uh, that Yorick always wants to be is a split pusher, right? Yep. You've always got to think of him like, he's not the same as Jax, but it's, it's easy to compare the two in the sense of uh, laning phase is pretty weak for Yorick. Uh, he primarily wants to get that Trinity Force once he's got it. He's really strong in the duels. Level 11 is really where he hits a spike because he has two points in his ultimate. Um, and against the Scion, as you rightly said, it's a very free lane. He's not going to be challenged. Urgot jungle, on the other hand, is not a champion that I have seen played in the jungle competitively. It's clearly something that Kajal has prepared in secret. Um, and I'm very excited to see what he does. In fact, I'd really like us to kind of track his early jungle pathing, see where he goes, see what he tries to do and where he tries to play around. I'm taking a look at how many jungle Urgot picks this season has seen around the world. And on my very quick search of over the last 50 games, not a single appearance, uh, Vedius. Okay, good, good. Um, <laughs> so we get to explore this one together. And it's interesting that Kikis is running the normal champion while Kadril is running the weird and wonderful one. Just before we jump into the game, I would like to take a moment to celebrate Kasing, by the way. This is his 200th LEC game on stage. We did ask for a party hat. I'm really upset that the party hat isn't there. But unfortunately, we couldn't make it, so I can only apologize there's no party hat. We but will do you better know to what? get party hats you know what, in future graphics. I'm going to give you my celebratory song instead. Oh, no. Do, 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 do. Yay, Kasing! You're old in the LEC now. Woohoo! Moving on with something less awkward. <laughs> Kadril is now going to be starting. He's got some of the spell book in the jungle okay, that's, on his, okay, his that's Urgot. Fine. That's fine. So I really like this once the game plays out and he can swap away from that smite as and when needed. So for any aspiring junglers of the Urgot, uh, <laughs> he has decided to start with his W. Uh, he also, I'm just kind of looking at some of the, the runes and stuff that he's running. He's got a 5% in CDR, nothing too crazy. He's taken a little bit more in his attack damage so that he helps kill the jungle early as well. Uh, he's obviously taken a couple points in that armor as well so that he helps survive uh, some of that. And I think about, you know, the shield really does help in terms of his jungle clear. I don't think it's going to be a super fast jungle clear, especially compared to an Olaf. We can already see Olaf halfway through completing his Raptors now after already picking up the red buff while only the blue has been completed. So Kajal, what he's actually going to do is go straight from his blue to his red buff to ensure that Olaf doesn't try anything sneaky and try and steal one of these two big buffs away from him. And I guess it would be pretty problematic if Olaf were to pick a fight early on. Taking a look up at that top lane, of course, as you mentioned, Verius, very early on, Yorick is going to have some struggles into the Scion. And I want to keep my track on just how much HP Finn is able to accrue with that Soul Furnace as well. I'm going to do very well. And down in the bottom lane, obviously Jeskla and Kasing starting to push forward. This is a lane that should be in control and that should be shoving. And I think the same can be said if you look in the mid lane as well. Oriana already pushing all the way forward onto Senkux. He's got the command attack and the Clockwork wind up passive on those autos, so really able to shove Zoe back. So yeah, I'm really excited to talk a little bit more about this mid lane matchup, and we're actually gonna have the opportunity to do a little bit of drawing as well. And while we are looking at this mid lane matchup, there are some things I really wanna draw attention to. So when playing mid lane, there are these three kind of points on the lane that you really wanna play around, right? And the thing is, Oriana typically has push because she can harass and she slightly outranges the uh, the Zoe, which means that the wave is slowly going to be getting closer and closer to the tower. Now, when you're being this aggressive, when you're past this point in the lane, you have to be extremely careful because the risk of a gank from here, from here, from here, all very, very high. So you have to be very, very careful and you have to make sure that you have jungle assistance. And you'll notice that when he was playing that far up, his jungler was hanging around here so he could have come in from assistance from this side and as well come from the blue side as well. So typically what the Oriana will look to do is keep an eye on the positioning of this ball, right? Because every time Senkix tries to approach the wave, what Special will want to do is actually just throw the ball onto the Zoe so that he gets harassed over and over and over again. And the only reason why he's not doing it right now is because he doesn't have that jungle assistance because his top laner is too busy getting kills. Of course, we are going to jump to first blood as we are celebrating, uh, talking about the mid lane priority. Thank you for that one, Vedius. And I'm sure we'll catch a replay of exactly how that trade kill took place in just a moment or two. 
And of course, if you want a little bit more about lane, uh, lane priority and how you can utilize it in your games, uh, go check out Level Up on uh, YouTube slash LOL Esports. So what happened here? What we see is no jungle influences. This is the straight up 1v1. In the early levels, Yorick typically not that strong, but he has two ghouls alive, and they're just doing all this damage while Finn is stuck inside the W. Good flash there from Expect to dodge out from the Q damage. The problem is the passive from Finn means that he can come back to life and with no flash available on Expect, he ends up losing his life. So this was a huge misplay on the side of Finn because dying early to Yorick is definitely a big no-no. Giving away that gold is not something you should be doing, and that kind of one-for-one one trade is not something we were anticipating on the caster side, hence no, the slightly longer I priority thought we were going to have a pretty discussion. slow early laning phase, to be honest, but now we see Kickers, he has caught out Kedral. But what I want to do is expand this discussion, because obviously Special was pushing, Special was shoving all the way into Synchix, he's gone back, picked up the boots, the double dark seal, and now is returning to lane. So what are the next steps for XL Esports with a jungle ergot uh, with some lane priority. You know, where does this Oriana really want to play? Or is it just about maintaining control against Zoe? So, I mean, the thing is, um the reason why I really don't like the Urgot pick is because Ariana's strongest during the laning phase, right? And typically, against a Zoe, you can actually build a pretty significant CS advantage because of how aggressively you can play. The problem is, you are very reliant on having jungle assistance as well because you are so susceptible to ganks as an Ariana because you have very few mobility tools, right? But We'll get back to that in a second, because we may see Kedril's first gank of the game. Look at the minimap. Kedril's going to step forward, interrupts the recall, reset the timer. The minion wave's coming up as well. So Expect's going to bring this one up. Does Kedril go for the flash to Zay? No. Expect will just tank up the turret. He's already thrown down the Maiden of the Mist. And take a look at the uh, cage. Not going to lock anybody in. Expect continues to take a lot of tower damage as Kedril's looking to pick up the kill and does so. But Zombie Scion can do a lot of work. One, two, flash away to safety. Now Finn decides to farm instead. Will not be able to pick up the kills. But look at the amount of experience and gold that is denied to Finn Scion. So there's a lot that I want to say right now, so I'm going to try my best to condense it as much as possible. First thing is that XL strategy coming into this game has clearly been attack Finn, right? We saw it in the draft. We saw that the, the Urgot was flexed to try and get this expect uh, the Yorick matchup so that he can better scale and win on the side lane. And now after the first kill and having no flash, they wanted to try and set up a dive. So all they wanted to do was put this rookie as far behind as humanly possible and I don't know if this is the best strategy for XL because they're running a Draven Thresh bot lane. This is the kind of lane that you want to get ahead, you want to be playing around it. Given that they're investing towards the top side, it means that Special is at serious risk of being collapsed upon by jungle, but the bot lane can't play as aggressively as they want as well because if we just have a quick look at the vision, you can see that it is in control of Rogue towards the bot side of the map. They have control over the scuttle, they have that control ward over the entrance towards XL's uh, side of the map as well, and it means that Urgot can't really pass towards the bot side of the map. So this Draven and uh, Thresh that wants to try and get ahead, wants to try and snowball against this lane, can't play as aggressively because they don't have that jungle support. Now on the bright side, Kedril is able to at least pick up the kill. As you can see, he ends up getting the kill credit after this plays out. But notice how many minions are underneath this turret. I want to see whether or not Finn is able to make it back for uh, the cannon at least. But it's a huge amount of experience in gold that's lost in addition to giving the kill over to Kedril. And thank you to the observers who show us that. Yeah, and so ultimately the strategy is working from the side of Exxon that they are getting Expect ahead and he will be this unstoppable split pusher that becomes very difficult to deal with later on into the game. But in the meantime, Rogue are doing extremely well in the mid lane. They're going pretty even in farm uh, against what is typically a, a tough matchup for the Zoe. And the Lucian has actually got a slight lead over that of Draven. He's already hit level six as well because Vanda has been roaming around so much so while it is great for XL on one side of the map uh, the the mid and bot lane is still going perfectly fine for Rogue. Yeah I actually want to just quickly shine a light on just how important uh, Kedril has been to XL is something we have spoken a lot about maybe not going to get a chance just yet actually as it's a defensive flash there from special Kedril steps in you can see kill participation at 15 this is what I draw your attention to 92 percent of all of XL's kills coming up to 15 minutes he's involved in kills plus assists he's the third best jungler in the league and he's got a pretty healthy uh, gold difference, at least in the oh, early stages dead. of the game. Now, unfortunately, the cost of Curse is real, and Kikis will get the help of Senkax to pick up a kill onto Kedril. But he is definitely the forefront 
for XL Esports. Now, while all of that is going on, not only have they killed the man on the front of XL, they picked up a kill onto Jeskler. The lane that's supposed to be winning is now falling behind. That's one kill to Hikyu. That's a second to Hikyu, and it's Kikis that walks out smiling. So remember that Kadrel burnt his flash up towards the top side of the map. He tried to set up a counter gank in mid to answer Kikis and Senkuk, setting up that play onto special. But because of that, it meant that Kikis could just follow him into his jungle, find that kill, and then translate it into more kills down towards the bot side. So you can see here, Kadrel, even with full vision of Kikis, He's not able to get away. He doesn't show the respect. <laughs> okay, we'll ignore the fact that Senkux missed his Q. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then immediately translate that straight back down to the bot side of the map. And yep. this was just... This is the problem, right? If you yep. invest all your resources top side, then it makes it very easy for Rogue to just say, oh, okay, we'll play towards bot side. He's playing Scion anyway. We're going to get our Lucian two kills. And it was a bold call to go with the Urgot jungle. I want to see if it can work out in the later stages of the game. Right now, Summoner Spellbook is not that valuable, but it will become as the game plays out. And XL Esports with Kedril, they're down 1,000 gold. Uh, against Rogue. Rogue, remember, they picked up their first win of spring last weekend, and they've got a lead at 10 minutes today. Now, Kedril tried to set up a sneaky play towards the bot side. Now he's investing resources there, but he's already been spotted out by the ward that Rogue have set up. So they're playing more defensively. Kikis is already on his way down. Finn has teleport as well. And so if XL tried to force this, they're going to lose. Oh, this is so scary. Uh, take a look at Finn's positioning on the minimap. He's set all the way back at his tower. If he wants to channel that teleport and come in with the ulti, he can. Expect can't interrupt anyway as well, so. Correct, nothing you can do about it, but it won't take any damage at least. Uh, That's but definitely, true. I think more importantly, it's just the, the positioning and the signaling. Uh, for Finn, also important to note that with the repeated ganks and trades in the top lane, he is down 30 CS. Um, Kikis is doing a very good job. He's ganking middle onto special and also farming up a storm. And this Lucian lane, is doing very, very comfortably into a matchup that was going to be difficult in the draft. So, what this ultimately means is now a lot of the pressure falls on Expect to carry later on to the game. But XL have to get to that point and they have to mitigate the strong uh, bot side of the map that they are now playing around. And I'd love to see XL make a play towards this Rift Herald. In fact, we even see Expect roaming towards the mid. Okay, he's not going to try and make a play there. They're, in fact, just trying to help Special uh, push so that he can go back to base. But, oh, Kedro, he's in trouble again. Oh, the sleepy trouble bubble through the chicken cam. Now, here comes Kedro. He uses the stopwatch to go golden. Paddlestar won't find a target, and Kedro survives a few seconds longer. Special's got no mana, got no shockwave, got no follow-up. The bubble trouble will not put Special to sleep. And it just feels like Kedro is getting bullied a little bit around that Raptor camp. A little bit? Trevor, <laughs> he's been killed twice in this Raptor camp now. <laughs> Poor man, can't jungle, but this is the risk that you run when playing the Urgot Olaf. So strong in the early levels because of just his raw stats and spammability of his undertow means that he can easily stick onto the Olaf, out-trade him in the early game, and find all the... It helps when the Sleepy Trouble Bubble almost always lands. Yeah, I mean, going through the terrain is just so frustrating to deal with, and yep. Kickers just slaps him with a pork chop and is able to easily pick up Yet another kill. Kikis is Olaf, 2-0-1. He swung around to pick up the second dragon of the game now. So that's Earth uh, as well as the Cloud Drake and the Mountain Drake, rather. Secured both of those. And this means that Rogue just continue to extend this lead. They continue to push further forward. And Rogue are going to be very content with how this early game has gone. But XL, they've started off the Herald and... It looks like Rogue initiated that lane swap already. You can see HQ up in the top lane. So this is what I wanted to see from XL. The problem is they may have been a little bit too slow to it because, as you identified, Rogue's bot lane has swapped towards the top side of the map, and they're in a position to contest. Look at the positioning of Jester. He's going to get there slower than HQ, but Zoe isn't in the fight yet. So XL will secure it. This is a bad fight for Rogue. All right, Vanda decides to jump in. The Flay delays the Pulverize. Shockwave catches the crab. That's not good enough, Special. Sleepy Trouble Bubble once again lands onto Kedril. He's able to take the Lantern to safety but the Herald was secured and I think they managed to pick up the eye as well. XL unable to find a kill but they escape with their lives. So that was a bit of a crazy exchange there. No idea why Vanda decided to engage when Senkux and Kikis weren't in position to follow up. That could have been disaster if it weren't for the fact that Alistair does have that very potent ultimate that obviously reduces a lot of that damage but XL as well 
they didn't have their AD carry in position to really help them. And so should a fight have actually started there, it could have ended in disaster. But I think Rogue were a little too slow to start the fight. Uh, but at the same time, XL, they missed the Shockwave. Uh, Cadrill again got hit by another Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Yep. Uh, and so like, it was a pretty messy fight on both sides. It was, and it's Rogue that maintained control. We're getting to the 15 minute mark. Look at the item differences between these teams. Sunfire K, Black Cleaver, Blade of the Ruined King. So he's got an easy large rod as well as a sword shoe, so yet to complete the tier one or the, the full uh, build item. But it's thrift shopping for everybody on XL. Still yet to complete their first item. Expect does not have access to his Trinity Force yet. But Expect will get some help from the Rift Herald, and it feels like all the summonables in the game are going to be helping knock down this tower. This should be the first of the game, actually. Depends how quickly. He yeah. can do work, but this will be tower. The first tower of the game secured by XL. But I'm just, again, keeping my eyes on the jungle. Look where Kikis is. Already up on the top side, constantly playing around his duo and just making sure that he's getting division and stealing away camps. He's now at 97 CS to the 62 of Kadrol, and it means that they can also look to set up a play onto special. He's very aware of the potential dive, so he disengages. But Rogue continuing to keep pressure, and again, the emphasis falls on to expect in this side lane. He is so much stronger than Finn. Uh, they secured a tower for him. He gets the first Blood Tower gold. He has the Trinity Force complete, and he's at level 11. So for me, this is where Urgot really turns on as a champion, and is very, very difficult to deal with in a side lane. Okay, we'll see if... Uh... Can you can get a chance? Do you mean that Yorick turns on? Yorick, what did I say? You said Urgot. Oh, sorry, I we'll meant Yorick. There. Definitely we'll meant Yorick. Confuse me for a second. <laughs> but yes, Trinity Force picked up. Expect is now activated. And the man that could be giving him trouble, if Kikis decides to come down to that lane and help Finn out. Kikis, of course, has played fantastically. 2-0-1 on the RLF last weekend. He played the Pantheon. Yep. He went 2-1-6 and six, and was one of the you know instrumental members in taking down Misfits Gaming. And you can see him making his way to the mid lane with the help of Vanda. If you look at the mini map, oh, his sign ulti is coming down with the unstoppable onslaught. Very good flash from Special. Sleepy Trouble Bubble will lock down Special, but summon a spell secured. So if they rinse and repeat, they can find that kill a second time. But I think it's so important that XL are defending this mid outer for now. They want to try and keep it alive for as long as possible because Orianna as a champion wants the laning phase to last as long as possible. She wants to have two items before she really leaves, because then she can go straight into team fighting, which is where she's at her strongest. So the sooner Rogue can take this tower down, the harder it becomes for Orianna to play the game, because you really don't want to send her off into a side lane, because it gets very easy to kill her with her low mobility and just general squishiness. Yeah, really, really difficult situation. Of course, next game after this, Splice versus Vitality and Fnatic versus Origin later today. Before that, Rogue are looking to pick up their second win of Spring and force a tie scoreline of Exile at 2 and 9. Look Kikis is now locked inside the Dark Procession. He literally just gets chunked down. Yorick activated, Kikis deactivated. I thought you were going to go somewhere cool with that. I know. I, 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 I had some old lines. I'm like, no, I can't reuse them. So, <laughs> nevertheless, I mean, Kikis just literally got run down. Um, what about chunked out? Yorick activated, Kikis laminated. What about laminated? Because that? that doesn't make sense at I, all. It's funny though. Kikis lamented, maybe it's a bit sad, but it doesn't quite <laughs> fit. And while all that's going on, Jessica was able to take down the top outer turret. Um, I mean, that's just a mistake from Kikis, just running straight so, into Yorick. I think this is the classic, I can deal with this, and people always forget the level 11 Yorick power spike, and I'm telling you. Oh, so he actually gets a flash from earlier. This is something we didn't talk that's about. That's why he couldn't the fact that, Yeah, the, the fact that the W, really good against champions like Olaf, who have no dashes and can get out of it. So then Kikis walks in, he thinks in a 2v1 he can take this. You can't! No. It's Yorick! Yorick is just too strong at level 11. Oh, just absolutely melted. Um, Look, if there were a time to make a mistake and go, oh, so he has that much damage? <laughs> this is the time to do it when you still have a gold Ouch. lead, when you're still in control of the game, and when Kadril is being shot like a fish in a barrel. Um, Kadril is really struggling to find an impact on this Urgot. He's down 30 CS to Kikis. Um, and yes, there is going to be some scaling and some tools that Urgot can play with later in the game, but he may not be able to stay alive long enough to make use of them if this yeah, continues. So I'll be honest. I haven't been impressed with the Urgot jungle so far. Uh, I feel like all it's done is get invaded on and offer little pressure for his laners that have been pretty reliant on jungle pressure when you're going for a Draven and an Orianna. And, like, just look at the CS differences. You can see both mid and AD for Rogue 
pretty much perfect farm. Yeah. 10, 10 CS per minute, uh, very healthy, good amount of gold. Draven, 2,000 gold behind the Lucian. No one wants to see that. It is uh, definitely not a happy place for Jeskler to be in. So I feel like this jungle pick has definitely hurt XL's early game. Uh, and right now, what they're kind of relying on is, again, we said it multiple times, X Specs in a side lane. He is this unstoppable monster. He is very strong in these skirmishes. 1v1s, 2v2s, he can outplay them all. So how does Rogue stop him then? I mean, if he's going to win in, in like 2v2s, potentially 2v1s, with the help of the Maiden, um, I mean, should Rogue just be playing other lanes, putting so, pressure in, in, uh, for other objectives? I mean, what Rogue want to do is, uh, once Lucian hits Black Cleaver, he's also really, really strong, a big item spike for him. And same for Senkux, uh, he delayed his Luden's Echo a little bit to get a needlessly large rod. Uh, it makes me wonder if he's just going to go for a very early death cap or if he just wants that additional ability power. But regardless, point is, mid and AD, very, very strong for the side of Rogue right now. The moment Baron spawns, I don't think they go for it immediately, but start playing around it. Force expect to come to you. Don't let him split push. Instead, force these kind of 5v5 scenarios while the Orianna is pretty weak and Jesko on this Draven doesn't have a completed item build yet. Uh, if you can force those situations, then you should be able to come out on top. And I especially like the combination of Scion, Olaf being able to just turn and burn if they're in and around that objective. Very good at diving as well. Low mobility champions like the, the Draven and the Orianna, Thresh can't save them both. He can't peel yeah. that kind of dive uh, from from two uh, from an Olaf and a, and a Yorick. So I think Rogue have a really good composition to actually team fight against XL, but they need to make this happen. Because if they just keep stalling out, then expect the more time he gets to spend in the side lane, the more difficult it's going to be for Rogue to match. Yeah, I didn't quite see that redemption, whether or not that was Senkux. I think that yeah, it I'm was. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Senkux. Exactly, just using it to be able to pick up something a little bit more useful. Vision is what I think There we go. And of course, um, you know, Kadrill's Ergot wasn't spotted out. Uh, leaves a little to be desired. Um, as does Jessica's Draven, to be fair. Now, the team did not play around him either or try to activate him necessarily in the early stages of the game, but down 30 CS to a Lucian who already has Black Cleaver as well as Blade of the Rune King completed. It's going to be a little bit more of a difficult mid game coming into Lucian who's going to offer a lot of versatility and tools and mobility to play around and dodge the Shockwave, for example, and try to get out of the, the uh, dark procession. And expect's going to be looking to put down. So you can see Rogue putting pressure on three lanes. They shoved all the way into bottom. Expect caught at the inner turret. Hiku's playing top lane, and Senkax just keeps slowly chipping away and slowly pushing the vision line deeper into XL's jungle. So I'm looking at the vision. Not yet committing to Baron Vision, but you can feel like it's on the card. Yeah, this like is coming. Right now, uh, what Rogue did first was gain control of the river, which is the first step. Uh, and then what they did was start pushing their vision slightly deeper. And so what it means is XL is forced to use their vision to just clear out their half of the map. Fun fact, Rogue then get to go back base, pick up all these control wards, and they don't have to worry about the river anymore because they know XL haven't approached it, which means they can then start to just put their control wards inside the enemy jungle and just start pushing deeper and deeper and deeper. And that makes it harder for XL to even approach the, uh, the, the Baron Pit. And then already this setup coming out from the side of uh, Rogue. And that's why things like junglers and supports often run two control wards. Good guy Hiku picking himself up two control wards. Uh, being a nice guy for the rest of the team. But right now, Rogue very, very strong. Yeah, got to do it. Got to push that vision forward. Rogue have also got the Mountain Drake behind them, as well as some pretty good damage between the Olaf and the Lucian to try and burn through. It's not going to be the quickest Baron ever, but I just, I really like the ability to to turn using the Sleepy Trouble Bubble, the Paddle Stars, the Cyanide Gage. There's a lot of tools for Rogue to use if they can put pressure in. You can just feel this. Get control of mid if possible. Shove the way forward. Here comes Finn. Trouble Bubble really hurts Expect though. But Bandit took a lot of damage. I'm not entirely sure where he took it from. So now Rogue immediately lose all this pressure around the Baron buff. And this is actually a really great situation for Rogue to be in because while they couldn't force the teleport out from Expect, the wave is just slow pushing in the bot lane, which means that all this farm is going to wait because the blue minions are actually killing these minions and Expect isn't doing anything with it. So he's losing farm, he's losing gold, he's losing experience, and um, ooh, he, he might be losing his life. His life. <laughs> Not this time around. Expect's able to escape for now. But you can see with the build, you know, the, the armor boots with Sterex Gage, uh, Senkux with a good battle star can still chunk him out. Hiku or Kickers would be able to pick up a kill in that scenario if they had been a little closer. 
Now Rogue back on Baron's setup. But again, there's a lot of vision inside the Baron pit. How many sweepers do they have? Both of them are on cooldown right now. Vanders is just about to come up, so you imagine he will use that on the river. You can already see that sweeper coming through now for him as it just goes on cooldown. And they'll just be clearing out this Baron river and just making sure, okay, XL can't see anything. And again, this is step one. Get mid-priority, clear out the river, push out top wave, and then slowly get that deeper vision in. So, small mistake from Vander costs a little bit of time yes. for his team, but not much more. We're going to 25 minutes onto the books, and Special is able to pick up the second item now. Marinonomicon there secured. So, panel star onto Kasing. The flare actually catches Senkax, but there's not enough follow up damage. So, Kasing with the flash in his 200th professional game at this tier is able to escape with his life. But at what cost? Expect continues to put pressure in the bottom lane, continues to shove the wave forward with the Maiden of the Mists. And all of that vision that was pushed into XL's territory is now at risk of being challenged or cleared out if XL push forward. Ultimately, though, XL were a little too slow for this. Expect wasn't in position to threaten the tower when the siege was coming out from Rogue. So even though Finn loses, sure, some farm and experience, uh, XL, they're only able to secure the mid-tier one while Rogue secure themselves the top tier two. They put a lot of pressure down on towards the top side uh, of the map and they get some big summoner spells out from XL as well. So uh, Rogue feeling very comfortable with the state of the game right now. Yeah, definitely a, a, a happy position in the state of the game. But if you take a step back and remind everybody the stakes, of course, playoffs is what everyone's trying to make a gambit for. And we've got a potential exchange in the middle lane of XL. And turn this one around, three wins, eight losses. That'll tie them up with wins with Fnatic. But look at the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Not going to find a target yet. Actually going to get the Maiden. And Rogue, they're pushing down the mid lane. Now, ooh, good hook. Nice Big shockwave. Done. Death Sentence comes out. Shockwave doesn't do enough meaningful damage. Kickers is dropped a little bit low, but Senkex keeps trying to fire off shots from the side. That's the engage of the hit by Pulverize. Special tries to run away. Not going to be able to do it. Kissing is already down. Jeskla will get killed by a Trouble Bubble. It's a double kill to Senkex. Rogue kept playing with pressure, kept turning the knife, and they eventually found a way to put XL down. And the problem for XL is that they grouped up as a 5 to try and force the 5v5, rather than trying to leverage the Yorick split push, but also, they were in a choke point. They could not get into a situation where they could stop Senkux from landing all this poke, and now Kedral forced away from the Baron. This will be an easy objective secure for Rogue. Oh, very nicely done. Rogue are in control of this game are in control of the flow. 6,000 gold up, three dragons up, a tower up. Yes, expects Yorick is going to be a thorn in their side. Not but anymore. Everything else they can do, everything else they have been doing, has been enough to get control and just really good decision making to push down this middle lane. So, I mean, ultimately the mistake here from XL was uh, trying to contest the Baron Vision without having mid push. This is why mid priority is so important when setting up for the play. And it forces XL because they don't want to give up this mid tower to just run through their own half of the jungle where Senkux is landing poke. Uh, you also have the potential engage from Vanda and Finn. And it means that the moment that the team is split up, they find a very quick punish. And now this gold has snowballed 6,000 in the lead of Rogue. And I just want to remind the fans at home that when the vote came through for who would win this game, only the fans voted for Rogue. Even StatSpot went for XL. So this could be the opportunity for the fans at home to lead in the prediction vote, Quickshot. Absolutely everybody. Congratulations to all the fans that push Rogue over the line. And for XL, just a little bit of an uncharacteristic game in some aspects, you know, like bold calls in draft with the Urgot with the Draven that did not pay dividends, did not prove to be effective enough against Rogue. Kick us on that Olaf, 2-1 and 4. Senkax on the Zoe, 3-0-3. Three, three. Look, pressure multiple lanes, Senkax in mid. Kick us up top. The minions are taking down the towers in the bottom inner. And the Canyon Wave is still going to be doing a lot of work. I mean, XL, yes, they have a pushing lane, but it's at the cost of their base. Slowly but surely, Rogue are breaking into the base of XL. Uh, at three items, maybe the Ariana is enough to swing in there, uh, some team fights in their favor, but they just take so much poke from the Zoe that they can never get a successful fight. And there was the initiation that you talked about a little bit ago, Vedius, how Scion, Finn is able to engage with the Unstoppable Onslaught as low mobility carries their force back. It means that the tower is able to be secured at very minimal cost. Now, the minion wave is finally going to die at Rogue's Ooh. inhibitor. And look at that sombrero. It finds nobody 
on the rogue side. They're able to escape. Inhibitor number one will fall. The tower in the top lane is being defended by Expect, and the minion wave that XL had shoving is now dwindling and disappearing. Rogue have got supers in the mid lane, 2,000 gold Baron buff. They're going to go spend some of the change that they've accrued, and they are in control. They are poised to take their second game of the split. And uh, XL, the only reason why they were able to get that bot tower is because one of the little ghouls from Expect was just uh, gnawing its way through the tower. Uh, I'm surprised that the ghoul could actually be that far away from him without needing either the Maiden of the Mist or Yark to be nearby, but today I learned th those ghouls can just live their own life. <laughs> they can just do whatever they want. Uh, so he just ran it down bot lane. He was like, I will help you, team. I am there for you. Uh, and he nobly sacrificed himself. Not to strong to enough to be classified as a winion, so Not we'll quite. need to, we'll need to find a new category. But he did a lot of damage, to be for, fair. Like if we could see damage to towers, that minion probably did more than the majority of XL. I just so. love the idea of a Yorick Ghoul living his best life. While the team loses on you, know, you take a vacation down bottom lane. Push to your inhibitor, enemy inhibitor turret. Take the turret, live your best life. As quoted by Vedius. <laughs> Um, but Rogue don't really care. I mean, Expect is pushing up in the top lane, and Rogue have been the better team today. Their draft, a little bit more understandable. It has been executed better on multiple stages, and with the exception of Finn being bullied out, uh, bullied out of lane early on, I mean, he's down 80 CS so, right now, it doesn't matter. Ultimately, I just think the priorities were wrong from yeah. the side of XL. They already had a winning matchup top if they had just kept Urgot. All they needed was a strong early game jungler like Olaf to just help play around their mid and bot side of the map. And if they had done that, I think their laning phase would have been way stronger. Oriana could have afforded to play super aggressively. I mean, we, we did that cool breakdown early on where Oriana likes to play that far forward in the lane, yep. but only can do it when she has jungle assistance. And the fact is she never got jungle assistance. The Draven Thresh lane never got jungle assistance, while Kikis was just like snowball, 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 and he entirely played around the bot side of the map. And right now, that is where Rogue have control. I mean, he just punished Kajal in his Raptor camps, <laughs> you know, yes. multiple times with the help of Senkax. Uh, that gold graph that was just on your screen before 30 minutes showed the scale. XL managed a 900 gold advantage early on, and Rogue's current gold lead is around 6,000 gold, so significantly more one-sided. Um, this is an interesting result if Rogue closed this out, because if Rogue pick up a win, and it is very likely that they will, the teams that are currently in the battle for 6th, 7th, and 8th, for example, are actually a little bit more comfortable. Yep. With Excel and Rogue being at two wins, nine losses, assuming Rogue win, that actually means that teams that have four or five or six wins feel a little bit more comfortable. There's a little more distance between the ninth and the tenth place teams who could have been chasing them if they were to secure any losses. So this is hugely, hugely impactful for the playoff race when you project forward and you look at potentially seven or eight teams who are competing for a playoff berth and also let's not discount the fact rogue could go eight to no from hero out right i mean i think h2k did something similar the likelihood's very low but yeah, it is but they possible. were they were two and seven yep in spring of last year and then they actually made it all the way to playoffs they did i think they finished eight and ten by the end of the split yeah. due to head-to-heads and tiebreakers yep uh they were able to advance to playoffs so look the possibility is there the fans at home Believed in Rogue, predicted Rogue to win, and Rogue are one Baron away from taking down X. So now, with that uh, huge chunk of damage landed from Senkux, uh, Rogue can just immediately go to the Baron and say, well, you don't have a mid laner, so we can just start this. And we're really not that scared. Um, so here we are. That Baron is being melted through. Senkux is zoning away XL right now. Sleepy Trouble Bubble is magnetically attracted to Kajal. He once again gets caught out. Now Baron is helping up. Baron actually chunks down Kickers. His GA gets popped, and Rogue is now running for his life. It's actually Expect that's in the front in the thick of things. Look at Senkax. He's going to get caught up by the Shockwave. It's a trade one for one thus far. That was a shutdown kill in a reply for Expect's life, who's probably the scariest member on XL. EQ now chases all the way forward. EQ, you're on the wrong side of the rift, buddy. He's going to get caught, devoured, feared beyond death. And now Finn forced to flash and run for his life. We just said that Rogue were in control, and XL say not today. The carries of Rogue are actually trolling. Senkux just flashed. <laughs> Senkux flashed 
into the enemy team to kill himself, and then Hiku does the same thing! The two massive carries literally just killed themselves, and they could give away a Baron to XL. This is unbelievable. Will Kickers be able to get into the pit and try to challenge this one? Jeska now steps all the way forward. He's got that uh, Bloodthirster and IE to do some damage. Finn steps in as well. Unstoppable onslaught. Engaged from Vanda. This is a multi-man fight, and the Baron was helping out Rogue. They've taken down Jeska. Decimating Smash comes up. This fight's gone so long. Another Shockwave's come up. A long-range death hit to Trunka Sick into the flame. Now Kajal's trying to get one out. Clockwork wind up, auto manages to pick up a kill into Kickers. That's a second as he picks up a kill into Finn. Now Zombie Scion looks for Kajal. Disdain buys some time and the Baron gets turned on once again. Here comes Senkut. Get Paddle Storm. Oh my! Sleepy Trouble Bobble and Expect picks up the Baron. XL Esports are trying to escape with it as Vanda's looking for Expect. Here comes another engage. Senkut turns this one around as the Sleepy Trouble Bobble starts away from. He queues respawn and pushes onto the main. Excel get Baron and this game feels reset. <laughs> oh my god. So I thought Seiko's actually stole that Baron then. It went down to 23 HP. So, all right, so let keep your eyes on Senkex and Hiku in this fight, right? Forget about the fact that the Yorick died. This really isn't that important right now. Just watch the the uh the Zoe. First of all, Flash is in, misses the Q. Now, the Flash was actually from the W here, but then she doesn't have any summoner spells left, which means that it's really easy for Special and Jessica to get the kill. The big downside is Kasing gets the thousand gold, which isn't ideal for them. Now, here, he QC Special isolated, so he then flashes in and then says, you know what? Oh, we can just get a free kill here. And then Kadro gets this huge AoE fear off, turning this into a four versus three. Well, I believe the term is, I'm helping. Uh, oh, man, that was awful. Anyway, going back to the Baron, <laughs> right? So now the Baron actually starts off, and this just gets chaotic because there are three tanks on the side of Rogue that can just tank this up, and Jeskal's stuck in the pit, which means that there's nothing that he can do because he's now stuck in the middle of three tanks. Not the best positioning in the world. And then a Shockwave comes through, right? And you're thinking, okay, this is pretty close. This is a tense fight. The TP comes through, and XL can finally swing it back in their favor, but we got to another thing going on, Trevor. <laughs> I it's can't keep track of everything. Trying to make sense of this game, and Excel, they're right back in it. I had written them off dead to rights. They had lost this game. But now, with this passage of play, punishing Senkex and Hiku and the rest of Rogue, Excel, despite being down 5,000 gold, despite picking up Baron, their Baron power play is <laughs> negative gold right now. Keep an eye on that tracker in the top right. This is, this is problematic for Excel, but I think crucially, Vedius, they've bought themselves some time. They've bought themselves a yes. few more crucial yes. minutes. Kadril now has two items. He's yep. got Stoneplay, he's got Black Cleaver. He has the ability to be more useful yes. as this game is cresting 36 minutes. All right, so as well, the Draven has three items, which is really good for him. Death Cap has been completed for the Orianna, and just look at the amount of magic resistance on the side of Rogue. Fun fact, there isn't any, which means that if he lands a really good Shockwave, and he's had some pretty good ones this game so far, it's just, unfortunately, hasn't had the damage to convert it yet, so now he should. Level 18 Ori, very, very strong point in the game. So I just, like... Quick shot, I just want to throw your mind back to Origin versus Rocket all those years ago. I'm, I'm having a lot of feelings right now. The uh, Tele Clown Wars, I <laughs> believe that is what that uh, series so, was called. I don't know who's going to win this game, and that's what makes it exciting right now. Now, the Quick reason shot. that callback is very important for those of you who may not know it, about six Barons went down <laughs> in that game. It took a long time for the number nine and the number 10 teams to kill each other. Here we other. go, here we go. Let's see whether or not Rogue can interrupt it. Finn gets locked inside the pit. The Shockwave simply does nothing. Inhibitor will be taken out by Rogue and Baron expires in 15 seconds. Remember, Elder Dragon was secured by Rogue. They've got themselves another 40 seconds of the buff. Kasing is forced to flash away to safety. Jessica's able to dodge and duck and weave away from the culling. Finn has taken a whole lot of damage. He's turned to 2,000 HP, forced away. Rogue are not done yet. They're going to take the second inhibitor. So ultimately, the problem here is that Exler trying to fight a four dragon infernal, uh, the elder empowered team right now, and they just don't have the power. There's so much damage on the side of Rogue. If Expector's still alive, maybe he could try and make some kind of split push play, but he's dead. He doesn't have the TP, and Rogue still have 10 seconds left on this elder. It's all about what can they get off the back of this. 15 seconds before Expect is able to respawn. Teleport is unavailable to him, and you can see the inhibitor timers on the left-hand side of your screen. Fans at home, are you starting to sweat, or are you confident that Rogue will still win this game? 
Because, of course, you're the only guys that voted for them. The rest of us all felt that XL would come back. And one shining light is all of that work that Expect has done since Expect Yorick has become activated. He has controlled that bottom lane so much so that these minions with the help of some ghouls have actually taken down the inhibitor I mean, turrets. But also the Part of the problem for XL is that Expect keeps getting drawn into a lot of these fights, but they don't have pressure, because if they ever s split him apart, then Rogue just engage with Olaf, Sion, uh, and the Alistair, which means that he's almost forced to group every single time, and you see that he's the first one to die, because the rest of his team can't follow up on him, so... XL's in this really weird gray area right now where uh, they're just going to have to rely on Rogue to make another massive misplay like they did in the first Baron uh, in order to turn this game around. Oh, take a look at the damage dealt over the course of this game. If a play around Baron happens, like you just mentioned, uh, Vedis, this will help special out. He's got that Void Staff, Deathcap, Ludens, Merlinomicon, dealt a lot of team damage for his squad, and surprising that Expect is doing so well on a champion that's traditionally spent a lot of time alone in a side lane. So. What I also find quite interesting is the fact that because Rogue are mostly nearing their full build, they actually have no control wards, so they're pretty dark across the map, but they don't care. They're going for a fight. Take a look at Finn's HP. 5,300 as he's pushing forward. Inhibitor Tower is down. The Death Sentence catches onto HQ, but he manages to escape with his life for now. They manage to kill the Inhibitor, but nobody's dead just yet. Jeskel forced to run for his life. GA gets popped from HQ, and Cajal is looking to get one of the Senkaks. Sleepy Trouble Bubble will not be enough to kill just yet. Senkaks manages to find it, uses the paddle star. In the back end though, Finn and Hiku and Kikis are running for their lives. Expect is in a one on three. He locks Finn inside the dark procession. That gets one, turns his attention to Vanda. That's a double. Expect is carrying Exile's lives. Turning his attention to Hiku. He's not done yet. GA gets popped. When he comes back up, there's two members to deal with. He's got a lantern to escape to. He rides a lantern to safety. Exile still needs to deal with 101 supers inside the base. Unfortunately for Exile, while they may have come out just barely on top in this fight. They've lost their whole base. Only one Nexus Tower stands in Rogue's way right now of securing this kit, uh, of securing this game. Elder spawns in one minute, the Baron spawns in one minute, and if Rogue can secure either of those objectives, you imagine that it's the curtain call for XL. I love Clown Fiestas. They are so fun to watch, and these team fights are some of the most unique I have ever seen. So the rest of Rogue, they're just focusing down the tower because they know that's what's the most important. But Finn, at this point in the game, he dies much. Oh, how? We're on the Baron. We're on the Baron. Quick shot. Let's go. Two man from the side of XL. Kick his Look at there. the mini map. Look at the mini map. There are super minions pouring into XL's base. No teleports are up for Rogue. And these supers are being held temporarily. Special tries to He's just running away. Down mid. Oh my word. Okay, so Finn's running down the mid lane. He used his TP to apply pressure. XL unable no, to get. The Baron. Yep. So this is the third Baron of the game that'll be secured. It'll be the second for Rogue. Whew. All right, so at this point you think, okay, Baron secured, three in hips down, they can go get Elder as well. Surely Rogue will win the game. <laughs> Surely. I, Nothing could possibly I hope, happen. I hope you guys at home can hear the crowd in Berlin laughing at that statement. Because with Baron, with the second Elder, second Elder, the stacking Elder mechanic. And it also lasts like 10, five minutes. I think it lasts five minutes. It gives like these all these double insane bonuses. It gives 50% bonuses on every, all the drakes that you have. It's like... Now, crucially, I'm the optimist, right? I look for the Are silver you? lining. <laughs> Vedis, yeah, on camera I am. Off camera I'm not. <laughs> 40 seconds before the top inhibitor spawns for XL, 17 before the mid inhibitor. That's on the left-hand side, which means once those double super minions are dealt with, XL will have the smallest, smallest amounts of breathing room. But they cannot afford a mistake. Four and a half minutes on Elder Dragon, two and a half minutes on Baron, and an inhibitor in the mid lane that is now available for killing. Rogue are pushing in for what could be, possibly maybe, the final push. What should be the final push. It would be a miracle for a team to turn this one around. Somebody cue the final countdown music, because this could be the fight. Where is Finn? Finn has thrown himself into battle time and time again with mixed results, but with Special getting chunked down and zoned away. Here comes Kikis. He's Ragnarokking in for the fight. The inhibitor in the middle is secured. The inhibitor at the top is about to fall. Cajal's run for his life. Jungle Urgot's done nothing for this game. And here comes Finn. The unstoppable onslaught gets played into the box. Shotgun comes out. The Nexus is the focus. Rogue activated. Exile obliterated. <laughs> the look on Kikis' face. <laughs> Relief as Rogue finally find the win.
Oh man, that was it, <laughs> closer than it should have been. Congratulations to all of the fans at home that voted in support of Rogue Esports, bumping XL down, picking up their second win of the spring split. It was a bumpy ride, but it was an exciting one. Whew. <laughs> Some crazy League of Legends fans, <laughs> like from G2 dismantling Shulker in 24 minutes to this. We've had some polar opposite games today. No, the Shulker. worst part for me, and this is a bit of a selfish one for anybody who was listening, I failed to find a rhyming word with, with expect activated, Yorick <laughs> activated, and I have so many now, obliterated, <laughs> you know, decimated. Uh, and I just, I, I yeah, I, I disappointed oh, myself, oh, but oh. I think, oh. crucially, Bold draft from XL that was not executed. Oh, yeah. And then some pretty monumental misplays, yeah. uh, which did not hurt Rogue in the end. No. But it could absolutely have cost the game. And you can see Expect sitting there. I mean, he really, really tried to 1v9. But it was just right. too heavy today. Yep. Uh, whew. Uh, so, yeah, I strongly believe that basically Kadrill on this, Urgot. If he was going to play anyway, it should have been towards the bot side of the map. The fact that Expect got a kill up top, I think, got into their minds where, like, we can just snowball this lane, we can get an early yep. tower, and then we can just kind of run away with it. You know, kind of like the uh, the Jax TSM game, when if they get him three kills and he's unstoppable, and you can put him anyway and he's 2v1-ing. Unfortunately, Yorick doesn't quite do the same thing as a Jax. He doesn't scale as hard, um, which meant that the Draven fell behind, Kick has played really well the around Ergot the bot side of the map. fell behind. Yeah, and so I just think that the draft made it difficult for XL. Uh, they didn't play towards the win conditions, which was very much towards the bot side and allowed the Oriana to get ahead in the mid. Yeah. Uh, and then, again, I just think the big deal here was Kikis, and I think that he played very well around his carries. And even though his carries made it very difficult for them to end the game in the end, <laughs> ultimately, when you have two elders and a baron, the, surely that's enough to end the What was the terminology? The uh, trolling, maybe, I think? Maybe I was a little strong. Oh, then. I loved I it, though. Listen, Kikis is one of the suggestions for Kia Player of the Game, along with Senkux and with Vanda. You guys can go vote by jumping at LOL Esports. Remember, you can also earn uh, experience, icons, blue essence, and more by watching the LEC on watch.lolesports.com. In addition to this, you also get updated stats, includes skill level order. Uh, it's a slightly different viewing experience. It's actually what I personally watch at home. And the interesting thing about this result is how the playoff race has now heated up. Number nine and number 10, two wins, nine losses. Yep. There's distance between them and seven and eight. Boy, you're actually saying is Rogue is catching up to Fnatic. Rogue is indeed catching up Fnatic. For more on Rogue's win today, let's hear from Dracos, Kikis. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Kikis, that was a wild game. Uh, I, so I'm curious right off the bat, how did you feel about the team's performance today? It was a uh, good game of League of Legends, and I think every one of us realizes that we didn't play clean, and it took us way too long to finish the game from how ahead we are. Um, I mean, we had to take two others, right? And then we still kind of struggled to, to finish. Uh, I think this game should have been like 25, 30 minutes max instead of 40. Um, so that's why you don't really see us being happy after the win. At the end of the day, it was still a win. Now I'm curious, Kadro locked in Urgot jungle. Was this something that you guys were ready for? Were you surprised when you saw it? How do you think it worked out as well in, in the game? We played once against it. I'm um, pretty surprised that he decided to... Because it's a pocket pick, right? But I'm still surprised that he decided to play it into Olaf because I don't see how he can do anything. Like, I was dominating him in the early game and um, I don't think he could really like get under, under control over me. Now we do have some wonderful highlights uh, from your time in this game. Obviously an immensely chaotic game. Were you... Were you still calm? You still had a pretty substantial lead, even on the back of what was a very disastrous play. Do you still feel like you guys were in control and were very calm there? Or did panic start to set in after that Baron went through for the side of XL? I think it's getting better because I feel like in the other games, we're like, after we get like 0 4, 0 5, 0 6, you kind of get anxious to win. And then when you're actually ahead, you're like, holy shit, is this going to be our first win? And then you're like, you kind of start to panic and you're like, ah, oh, you don't know what's, what's going on, you know? But it's getting better. Um, we still get kind of excited um, when, when, we are, when we are ahead. But we are trying to keep it down. I'm like, OK, guys, just, just chill. Like, it's fine. We, we take our time. Um, I mean, we had a lot of time. We had 40 minutes to, to think about what we want to do. So Definitely had some time there. Well, it is progress. Congrats again on getting your second win on the board, Kikis. Good luck to you in the future games. Hopefully a little less uh, chaotic than this one, it's safe to say. Yeah, thank you very much, and uh, we're hoping to get some more wins under the belt. Yeah.
we'll see what happens in the days to come. But for now, that's it from us. When we come back, our third game of the day, Vitality versus Splice, right after this.